Provinciano. I'm Ilocano Ibanag, and I grew up in different parts of Luzon. I did not know that I would grow up to be a musician. See, it was the 70s, and the context of my parents when they were growing up was surviving a war, raising a family, and building a career. And the definition of career back then was very limited. So, pare, madre, doctor, doctora, nurse, abogado, politico, ingeniero, arquitecto, uh, accountant, right? Music and the arts was not part of that official list. In fact, I don't know if they still do it, but back then, they called it extracurricular activities in school, <laughs> right? So it was not within my radar. See, my parents looked at me and said, this kid, uh, bibo, filosofo, abogado. <laughs> and people believed them, and I guess I believed them too, because I grew up thinking and believing that I wanted to be a lawyer, which I am, by the way. So music took over really early. We moved around Luzon a lot because of my dad's work. And traveling from one province to the next was always an adventure because we didn't know what to expect. But there was always music. And my love for music started with the Beatles and Elvis and Sesame Street. And it was Sesame Street that taught me how to read and write. And music was an integral part of that process. It's for Cookie. I, I, I'm sure you know the song, <laughs> right? What Sesame Street did was it made learning fun and engaging. I didn't know that I was learning anything, but so on to high school. And music led me to dancing. And I was a dancer before I became a musician. I was a b-boy before I became a... No, I'm not going to dance this afternoon. <laughs> so... The path that I was on, lawyering, was still there. It's always been there. But man, I loved music and dancing so much that it felt more real than that goal of being a lawyer. You know, being a lawyer seemed so far away. Uh, you know, we would walk around Tugigarao with a boom box and a roll of linoleum, tapos naghahanap kami ng ka-showdown sa mga kanto. My shoulders were permanently bruised, but man, I had so much fun. And it was also around that time that we started having conversations about career. Career, the future, what course to take, what, what, which college to go to. And there was no music and arts in that discussion. No. Zero. There was only law school. Nakatapaoho ako sa law school. So, I didn't know it then, but the path I was on was already changing. Wala akong kamalay-malay, kasi naka zero in ako sa law school. But it started taking on a different shape, color, and, and feel. And then I was a senior. The Dawn came out with, you know, we were heavy into new wave music. The Dawn came out, a Filipino band, and then they released uh, enveloped ideas, and everyone's mind was blown. And like any self-respecting music fanboy, of course we formed our band, and we played in our school, and we probably were not as good as we thought we were. <laughs> but it was fun, you know, we had so much fun. So on I went, I went to, I went to college, and pre-law, so nakatatak, nakatatak na talaga yung, yung path ko. It was pre-law, and I was here in 1988 in Manila, Galing Provincia. And then it was the start of the 90s alternative explosion. So, ang wasak-wasak ng eksena nun. Kasi there was so much amazing music going on. And then alternative music meant so much to so many people back then. To me, what it meant was, I can listen to whatever music that I wanted, and then my family and my friends may not like it, but that's okay. I was emerging into uh, uh, my own person. So I would go to Club Dread, the old Club Dread. I would go there alone, sit in a corner, and watch amazing bands play. And it was crazy. The Razorheads, Yano, the youth, Color It Red, 
same datik balang. So, I almost did not go to law school. <laughs> because at the time, I was far more interested in, in alternative music and in developmental work. So, pag salta ako sa Maynila, I was so much into alternative music. And at the same time, I was doing a lot of volunteer work. So, we were <laughs> delivering food and water to soldiers in the front line during those coup d'etats that Cory Aquino had to endure. We were wrapping food and delivering food elsewhere, some province during typhoons and uh, earthquakes and floods. And then when Mount Pinatubo erupted, we ran a refugee camp in Ateneo. And then when the people had to go back to their provinces, we adopted one barangay and we worked on its rehabilitation. So, an layo layo na naman ng law school sa akin. But because of that collective experience, I realized that we needed good people in developmental work and we needed lawyers in developmental work. So, nagkaroon siya ng purpose ang law school para sa akin. I was into alternative music. I was into developmental work. Therefore, I wanted to be an alternative lawyer. So in law school, it was sometime in 1993 that I discovered that I could write songs. Sabi nung facilitator ko sa Human Rights Center, sabi niya, Vin, alam mo, mahilig kang magsulat ng tula, mahilig kang tumugtog ng gitara. Pagsamay mo kaya, eh ako si Utu-Utu, sinubukan ko naman. At natuwa ako, and I became a songwriter and never looked back since. But law school was so rigid. I went through a very dark time in law school. Uh, it was not fun. Uh, I hated it because it felt like it had nothing to do with everything that was happening outside the four walls of the classroom. Law school was about your professors, the law, and what the Supreme Court said. So I lost my way, went off the grid. And it was the time that I started just really getting into songwriting. And it was songwriting that kept me sane. Songwriting and a bit of uh, alternative lawyering because I already started working as a researcher. And for some reason, you know, I, I found my way back. And then I discovered Joy Ayala around that time. You know, this, this person, this amazing artist who influenced a generation of activists. So when Joey would sing Saglit lamang ang ating buhay. Dilamsik sa dakilang apoy. Ang bukas na nais mong makita. Ngayon pa man, simulan mo na. How can you not be moved? How can you not move? So I eventually became a lawyer. I was back on track. I was on the same path. But not really, because that path has changed. It veered towards the left. And my first job was in Saligan. Saligan was an, is an NGO focused on developmental lawyering. We were working with basic sectors. So, kamot ulo yung mga magulang ko. Sabi nila, I, I thought, you're a lawyer. What are you doing? Why are you marching in the streets? Asan yung barong mo? Bakit ka naka-shorts tsaka naka-sandals na pumapasok? And then I had to explain to them that I was still a lawyer, but it's not the typical kind of lawyer that they would encounter. We worked with farmer paralegals in 21 provinces, trained them. We used popular education methods, creativity, fun, music. And it was really good. It was very effective. Um, we bonded with the farmers because of music, because after a long day's work, we would sit with them, uh, guitar, pulutan, inumin, then folk songs, love songs, uh, songs of hope and the revolution, and then we bonded as friends. Things change, and then I had to leave um, Saligan. It was a time also that I started Twisted Halo. It was a band, and it was the screaming bullhorn to all my activist aunts, and it was fun. But I had to leave Saligan and Twisted Halo because perspectives and priorities have evolved. I became a father. I met my wife also through music. 
and I went into the corporate world. So <laughs> I stayed there for quite a bit. It was fun sometimes, but it wasn't really for me because it, you know, it felt like slow death. And sabi ko kay Chris, this is not the life that I want to live. So I left, and then somewhere along the way, Periodico was born. Uh, two albums out, one coming, a few gigs here and there. My, my musical path, uh, I think, will always be left of center because, because, just because maybe of who I am, and that's okay. But it's been really cool because I, I got to work with my musical heroes, and I, I got to do cool stuff like play with a 50-piece orchestra, collaborate live with Ballet Philippines, that was really scary. And I, I was able to write songs for uh, Jose Rizal, Andres Bonifacio, and recently for Apolinario Mabini with No Less Than The Dawn. So in 2008, a friend of mine came to me and said, hey, let's make music for kids. Sabi ko, knowing where I came from, sabi ko, you know, making music for kids is not enough. When we were training farmer paralegals, ang requirement lang namin sa kanila ay read and write. Marami sa kanila hindi nakagraduate ng grade school. And it was very effective. So sabi ko, imagine if, imagine if we started earlier with them. So Juma Jam was born. It's a social enterprise, and what we do is we create music-driven learning solutions that are bilingual, that are fun, that are engaging, rockstar made, educator approved, uh, kid-friendly. And the idea behind that is that uh, for as long as kids have fun learning, the learning doesn't stop. But to scale it, it had to be married to an emerging platform. Uh, Sesame Street was so successful because you know, they took learning out of the classroom, uh, they infused fun creativity and play, and then they put it in an emerging platform, which was TV. Now we're doing the same thing with Juma Jam. So we created the Juma Jam app where parents, teachers, and kids can bond, have fun, and create teachable moments. Tingin namin kasi, you know, the way that kids are learning is changing, and technology and innovation have a lot to do with it. So my path now is developmental work, music, and education technology. I remember I, was, I remember when I was a kid, I would ride my bike in Apari, Cagayan. And I would ride it until the road ends, until the pavement ends. And then I would ride it some more. And then I think I still do ride that way now. Music has been that bicycle for me that has kept me going. And that will keep me going still. Um, if there is anything that I would like you guys to take away from this short 15 minutes is that do not be afraid of the unknown. When you follow your road, you follow your path, you know it could lead somewhere. Um, but roads end. Tumitigil yung cemento. And you actually have a choice to keep moving forward. And I will always choose to keep moving forward. So I know that in my path, wherever it takes me, there will always be music. Thank you.